Good evening everybody, this is Champions of Industry and here's a story about a man and a pretty famous beer. Welcome along to the first episode of Champions of Industry. Today we're talking about this guy. Arthur Guinness. It's 1752 and a 27-year-old Arthur Guinness living in Lexlip near Dublin has just been given £100 by his godfather. £100 would be a relatively low annual salary for this period, so it's a pretty decent amount to receive in one sum. This godfather in particular was Arthur Price, the Archbishop of the Cashel Estate. Guinness's father was Price's servant and would probably have been producing beer for the other members of staff on the Cashel Estate. With this £100, Arthur Guinness set out to Lexlip to start up his first brewery, presumably fueled by his dad's passion for beer. Ten years later, in 1761, Arthur is married and just about to have his first of 21 kids. Oh, lad. Lad. The brewery in Lexlip wasn't enough for Arthur and he soon set out to Dublin, more specifically St James's Gate. Around this time, many Dublin brewers were experimenting with porter, the drink of the time, and Arthur saw this as the perfect chance to corner the market and become a legend. On the 31st of December, he signed a lease for £45 a year for the St James's Gate Brewery for 9,000 years. Oh, you know, it makes sense, you know, life expectancy in the 1700s was, was 36 years old, so he's, he's covering his bases for the next... 250 generations. Ten years after this lease was signed, Arthur became the master of the Dublin Corporation of Brewers and his first porter went on sale in 1776. In 1799 he expanded the brewery and decided to dedicate solely on porters. He appointed members of the Purser's family from London, they were a London brewery producing similar types of porters, as his members of staff and this partnership continued well into the 19th century. Arthur died three years into this partnership but his brewery is already producing 20,000 barrels a day. Let's talk about porters. It used to be that breweries would send out barrels at a very young stage, only for a landlord or dealer to age them himself before selling. Porters, however, were aged at the brewery and were sold fit to drink. This made them extremely upscalable and ready for mass production. The main London brewers of Whitbread, Parsons and Truman caught on to this and made mega dollars. Porters at the time were made using brown malt and these London brewers were experimenting with thermometers, hydrometers. These would transform the nature of the porter. However, Irish brewers thought the ingredients were more important and were trying to find a way to get that richness from the start of the brewing process. They found a way to roast malted barley until black. This gave it a much richer but burnt flavour, which is what we see today in every pint of Guinness. This caused these Irish porter brewers to drop brown malt altogether and just use pale malt and roast it until charred. The development of stout and porters are very much intertwined. Stout, by definition, would mean strong and be a label given to the porter to mean that it was the strongest of that range. Guinness's own extra stout used to be called extra superior porter. So Arthur is dead, but that's not the end of his legacy. Every year, 1.6 billion pints of Guinness are sold across 60 countries, with the UK and Ireland leading the way and Nigeria in third. If you're not a fan of Guinness, what are you? But you can't help but love their adverts. Up to the 1920s, Guinness had no advertising at all. They relied purely on word of mouth to sell their products. And now it's probably the first thing people think of when they think of Guinness as a brand. From the iconic posters featuring the toucan and whatever the hell that is, up to the amazing, awe-inspiring, and sometimes tear-jerking adverts they produce today. The Guinness logo motif is a harp, and it's the Trinity College Dublin harp. It's also the same as the crest of Ireland, but flip round for trademarking issues. There are many different types of Guinness available across the world. Classic Guinness Draft, Original, Extra Stout, Foreign Extra, Special Export, Bitter, Extra Smooth, Malta Guinness, Mmm. Mid-Strength, Red, and the 250th Anniversary Edition. Most recently, they've released two new porters with classic bottles. The Dublin Porter, a slightly sweeter version of Guinness, and the West Indies Porter. I tried this last week and it is really nice, a lot more refreshing, quite tangy compared with normal Guinness, and I really, really recommend it. They're also about to release this. Oh, God. Oh, oh, Jesus. Let's get it away. No, get rid of it, get rid of it. Oh, oh, thank God that's good. Oh, no. Oh, what the? 
Guinness Master Brewers. Proudly what is what is that Guinness even? Oh, American Guinness! Delicious. If you're going to visit Dublin, I don't blame you. There are some fantastic pubs there, and of course the St James's Gate Brewery. It's well worth a visit. It's a little pricey to get in, but you do get a free pint of the black stuff and a really cool tour. You get to see all the old adverts. You get to go in the Guinness Experience, and you get the best view of the city from the top of the tower. Science time. Proper pints of Guinness appear to have falling bubbles travelling downwards in the glass. This is actually just drag. Bubbles that contact the glass on their way up are slowed by the glass, but bubbles in the middle can create a column of much faster moving liquid up to the top, which fans out and falls down the side, making the bubbles seem like they're falling down the side of the glass. You can actually get Guinness served in anti-pint glasses, which are wider at the bottom than at the top, and in this case, the bubbles move up the side. Who the hell would want one? What the, what the hell is even? What is that? What is, what is it? Why would you want an anti-pint anti glass? I could talk about Guinness for hours, and it is truly one of my favourite drinks to get when I'm out. This is the first time I've actually ever had it in a can, and it does feature the little widget inside to make it seem like you have got it out of a tap. Having said that, you really can't beat a pint of Guinness in a pub served by someone that really knows the history behind it. And the story of a man from a poor family whose dad was a mere servant, and all he wanted to do was make beer and get the world drinking it. He was given a vast amount of money, he could have done anything with it, but he wanted to make a beer just great. What a, just great. In the words of Guinness themselves, they're only 255 years into a 9,000 year lease, and they've got a lot more beer to make, and I for one cannot wait. To Arthur. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to keep up to date with all videos I release, you can subscribe up here or watch my Belgian beer guide. And if you really want to, the first ever pint-sized episode. I'll see you guys next time.